know that there's some things that you've been up against. But I just believe that we serve a God that can cause you to win even in the midst of it all. I want you to take this opportunity to reactivate that champion that's on the inside of you and say, it is still my winning season. Come on. Just begin to release that in your atmosphere. It is still my winning season. Now, we're going to release this all over the world. I don't know what you're in, but I came to tell you, you're about to win. Hey! Oh! The enemy came up against your heart. Let me came up against your children. The enemy came up against your name. Oh, and the enemy came up against your character. I want you to know you will win. Win. You will win. Up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your fears. Oh, Lord. The enemy came up against your business. You will.
I took too many failures before I came to speak to that get back up in you. And I declare that today you're getting back up again. You're getting back up again. I know what the devil said. I know what the government said. I know what people said. But God says not so. God says you will win. God says you will win. God says that you will win. That's what I call you. I call you a winner. I don't call you broken. I don't call you defeated. But I call you a champion. I tell you to lay hands on yourself and shout, I am a champion. I am a champion. I know you heard it. I know you're torn. It's facts that the doctor said you would never get well again. It's facts that the government said you won't get what's due to you. It's facts that your family said you won't ever be restored. But I came to tell somebody the truth still remains. That in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you will. You want to put a smile on your face and say, Cause it's my winter season. Now somebody give God praise right there where you are. I said, You want to give God praise right there where you are. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can't see you physically, but I just know that as you give God praise, that something is happening in the heavenly realm. I said, Something is happening in the heavenly realm. I need you to open up your mouth and give God glory because it's shifting, it's turning in your favor. Somebody open your mouth and shout it. Good morning, everybody. I'm so blessed, glad, and appreciative that you joined me on this morning for our Sunday morning virtual worship service. Uh, I've been praying for you guys all week long. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so elated. On, I am so elated that we are finally coming up out of COVID. And I'm, I'm grateful to God for what God has done with us through this whole pandemic. Uh, I'm praying for you that God will transition you into your blessed place. I am truly, dear hearts, I mean, I am truly excited about what's in front of me. And I hope that you have the same expectation, that you are indeed excited and with great anticipation of what God is going to do in our lives. Uh, I wanted to, before I get started on, on, to, on this morning, I just want to chime in and, and, and give my condolences to a very, very, very dear friend of uh, my wife and I. Uh, and I hate to just leap right into it. Hope you enjoyed the praise and worship. But, uh, you know, my heart was saddened on on this week uh, with the transition of uh, my wife and I, dear sister and, and friend, uh, Evangelist Joyce Rogers from Denton, Texas. Uh, uh, just an incredible woman of God, an incredible voice in the kingdom, lived an exceptional godly life, uh, and, and we're just so proud, my wife and I are just so proud and blessed and feel favor of God that uh, uh, we can call her or call her our friend. And uh, uh, we will miss her dearly. As many of you, we will miss her dearly, her, her ministry, her, her, her anointing, her personality, you know, uh, her smile. You know, every time you saw Joy, she had a smile on her face. Many times my wife and I and I ran into a to her a few times by myself, and, and, and we just sat and just chat. Uh, I remember one of our fun times, we, uh, we, I went into Houston's in, in uh, North Dallas uh, to get me a bite to eat for lunch, and Joyce was in there, and we sat there at the, at the counter and just chit-chatted and just had a wonderful time, and that's just one of the times. If I started going back and, and talking about all the times we spent together, it'd be many. Uh, many times she spoke 
at our Rainbow Conference. She spoke at our at Gospel Tabernacle Church. I spoke at her conference uh, a few times and, and even at her church, uh, her home church. And then she was just a very, very, very dear friend and an incredible, phenomenal, uh, not just woman of God, an incredible person. She was just genuinely nice. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of saved people that this are nice. <laughs> you know, they love God and got the Holy Ghost and all that, but just as mean as can. <laughs> but Joyce was genuinely not not just saved and sold out to God, but she was just a genuinely nice person. And I'm going to miss her. My wife and I are going to miss her dearly. Joyce, uh, Joyce rest in peace. You you've earned your space in the boundaries of glory. And uh, we love you with all our hearts and mind, and, and she'll never forget you. And so I just wanted to take a moment and just recognize her. And I know many of you have been recognizing her all week, but I, we wanted, I wanted to take a special moment and acknowledge her in behalf of myself and my wife. Love you, girl. All right, y'all. Let me, let me prepare to go into the Word of God. And I hope I don't seem like I'm rushing to anything, but uh, uh, let, me, let me get to the Word of God. Uh, I, I want to share something on this morning that I believe is going to, to challenge you and bless you and, and give you a little insight, a little peep into uh, my personal space and, and the personal space of, of the Apostle Paul. And I'm going to somehow uh, hopefully splice both, both together to help you to understand better what I believe uh, Paul was trying to convey to the people of that day, the church at, at Corinth, and, and what happened, or, or a certain thing that happened in, in my own life. And so, l- allow me to just uh, uh, read a portion of the Word of God. I'm going to be ministering from 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, and because uh, of time, and I'm, I'm going to read from 1 to 10. I'm not for sure if I'm going to read it all today, but I'm going to read as much as I feel to, and then because I want to go into the, to the Word of God. Uh, chapter number 12 verse, verse 12, verse number 1, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Listen to this. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one, such an one caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory. I'm sorry, for such an one will I glory. For such an one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth me. Now I'm going to stop there. I'm, I'm going to get to all the way to 10, but to get to what I want to talk about. Okay, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that you bless this word, and even bless, God, uh, the splicing of the two of what I'm going to say. In your name I pray. Amen. I want to start off because periodically, you know, periodically, beloved, uh, I go into the archives of my mind and my spirit and take trips and take journeys going down memory lane and reminiscing and considering some of the experiences I've had in God and and they be many. You know, some are just immeasurable and some are just, you know, just walking with God. And and I have so many uh, litany of things that I could share with you and share with others as to how God has, has shown himself, revealed himself in my life. I'm, I'm so humbled. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that God has chosen my life, that God has positioned my life to, uh, in a way that uh, he reveals himself or choose to reveal himself to a little man like me. 
I'm humbled. I, I'm blessed by it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was thinking as it relates to this text, and 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 I was thinking as to an experience, and I'm somewhat torn, uh, difficult to even discuss because it is such a powerful, a powerful moment in my life. Matter of fact, it may be, if not the, it's certainly one of the most powerful spiritual God encounters that I've had in my life to this day. It's certainly in the top three. And, and the one I'm referencing or going to reference is several years ago when I first started Gospel Tabernacle. Uh, we were in a little church, a little small church in the city of Balk Springs, Balk Springs, and, and it was on a street called Haymarket. And, and uh, we had moved, we started in the YMCA, we moved from the YMCA, and I'm going to get to the text, and this will not, I will not teach this in one, in one setting. Uh, and we had purchased a church uh, in, uh, in Pleasant Grove on, uh, or in Balk Springs, we started in Pleasant Grove, and uh, on Haymarket. And, and many of you who attended those services, many of you who uh, know about those services that we had there, uh, was just mind-boggling. Well, uh, I had an encounter with God right before the explosion that happened in Balk Springs that is monumental to many of us. During that time, uh, as pastor, I decided to uh, do Bible, not Bible class, but prayer. Uh, corporate prayer, if you will. Every Tuesday night uh, at, at 7 o'clock, I would gather the saints, as many that would, wanted to come, and we would pray every Tuesday night uh, in behalf of our city, our nation, the people of God, etc., etc., etc. And one night, uh, I decided, and some of you may have heard the testimony, but I'm, I'm giving this for a reason. One night, uh, I decided to uh, get to church early before everyone uh, to have a prayer time, a prayer moment alone before everybody came. So I got there about maybe a quarter to six, and I went into the sanctuary to, to go before God. And what happened to me that night, I shall never forget for the rest of my life. I was praying as per usual and, and, and going before God as per, per usual. And, and, but this particular night, it was different. This particular night, it was something odd. It was just a presence and an aroma. It, it, was, it, was, it was as though, and, and this may sound far-fetched to you, it was as though God himself, and I know literally God himself wasn't in that room. But the presence of God came in that room in such a way that it, it, it overtook me. And I never shall forget, I was on my knees and on my face before God, praying to God and calling on God and calling out to God. And the anointing of God, the glory of God, came into that room in such a way that it flipped me over on my back. And I began to cry out to God the more, the more in, in, in an in a, in a, in a, in ex ex extensive way, just crying out to God and just, ah. Uh, and, and I'm trying to understand this because I, I had never experienced God like this. I had never experienced the presence of God like this. And, and, and it was unfamiliar to me. And, and, and something happened, y'all, that literally changed my life forever. As I was there crying out to God, I was looking up toward the ceiling. And it was as though the ceiling opened 
It was as though I could see through the ceiling, I could see through the roof, and I could see the, the stars and, and the moon and, and the sky. It was as though the, 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 the sky was, was, was setting on top of me, was, was on top of me, even though I was in a building. It's as though I could see everything, the, the, everything, the moon, the stars, the, the stratosphere. It, it, was as though, it was as though heaven had, 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 had come down to me and, and, and it was mind-boggling. It was so mind-boggling that I began to cry and cry and beg and plead with God to take this away. My, my spirit couldn't handle it. My mind couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I'm there and I ceased to pray. And all I was doing was begging God to take it away. The, the, the presence of God was so strong. I was just begging and pleading with him, please take this away. I thought I was getting ready to die. I thought I was getting ready to leave here. I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't know what was happening in my midst. I had never experienced it before. And all I wanted was for God to take it away, take it away. I was afraid I was about to die. When I think about that, I think of this text. I think of the experience that Paul had when he was taken up into the heavens and God began to reveal himself to him. Let's go now into the narrative. He says unto him, it's not expedient, and I'm going to get to it, for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and to revelations of the Lord. He said, it is not expedient to glory. as appreciative and mind-boggling as it was, it would be stupid of me. It would be ridiculous of me. It would be, it would be, oh God, a silly thing for me to try to glory in what happened to me that night. I am absolutely humbled, like Paul, that God revealed himself to him in such a way. And let me tell you why. Because I believe that there shall be more. As he said, God is revealing himself to this man. I believe and I'm desiring and I'm praying and I've been praying for your babies. I'm praying that God will reveal himself to you that will change your life forever. My life has not been the same since that time. When God brought me up out of that setting, he released or in, embedded an anointing in my belly. And many of you can attest to this, that people came from the north, the south, the east, and the west. People would come and sit on the steps. People would come and stand around walls. People would come and stand in rooms where they couldn't even see me just to hear the sound that was coming out of that place. People would stand outside. We opened the doors and people would stand outside to hear and to experience what was going on in that place. In, in cold weather, in hot weather, it didn't matter to them. People were lining up to the street so they could get in, so they could experience what was going on in that place. As, as mind-boggling as it was to them, it was just as mind-boggling to me. And the awesome part about it, I feel like Paul. That was the beginning. And I believe God is about to reveal himself once again 
in an incredible way in the midst of his people. Listen to him in verse number two, how he seeks or try to describe what happened. He said, I knew a man in Christ above or about 13 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether in the spirit I cannot tell, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether in the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. And I feel that way. I can't honestly tell you what happened to me that day. I can't tell you if I was actually in my body. I cannot tell you. I I don't know. I cannot explain it to this very day. I cannot explain to you what happened to me. But my prayer is that God, I pray, dear Father, that you will begin to reveal yourself to your people in such a way that is indescribable. That they will have a difficult time describing or telling or testifying to what you've done in them, to how you've revealed yourself to them. If, if, they, if they're asked about it, they'll have a hard time finding words to articulate what you've birthed in them, what you've put in them. The anointing that you have permeated their spirit with, how you've dealt with their mind, how you have revealed the isness of yourself to them. Do it, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, don't let us come forth out of this business as usual. God, don't let us come up out of this business as usual. People need to see your glory. People need to see your glory. People need to see and experience your hand upon your servants. People need, people want to see you reveal yourself in the midst of this next generation. Reveal yourself in the midst of this next generation, not with fanfare. Your presence, your glory on display, reveal yourself to us, God. We don't want to see flesh. We don't want to see a man. We don't want to see someone experience someone's gift. We want to see and experience you. We want to see and experience you. God, what I'm so reminded of and mindful of and aware of is how you revealed yourself to the people back in the day. And I don't like going back in the archive saying that, but it is true. We're seeing today religion, we're seeing today presentation, we're seeing today glitz and glamour. We're seeing today, God, the things that's impressive to the eyes. But God, reveal yourself in the spirit realm, who you are and who you desire to be in the life, in the consciousness of your people. Father, In the name of the Lord Jesus, show us. Show us your power. Let us experience your hand. Let us experience your presence, God. Let this be a wake-up call in the church. Let this be a wake-up call to your mouthpieces. Let this be a wake-up call to your people. Let this be a wake-up call to the church of Jesus Christ. God, give us a hunger for you, not a gift, not a gift, but you, not glitz and glamour, you, not just excellence, you, not just articulative skills on the display, but you. We need to experience and come to know you, not just 
a church or a building, but you. Y'all pray for me. I don't want to get too caught up. Because if I do, I won't finish. Say, God knows, verse number two again, such as one caught up into the third heaven. Verse number three is well. I'm ready to want to get to. I knew such a man referring to himself in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell God knows. Verse number four, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words. I can truly identify with this. I'm not trying to make myself a Paul or Peter. I'm not trying to make myself one of the twelve. But I do know that what I experienced that night, I shall never forget for the rest of my life. How that I was caught up into a place in God that changed my life forever. That's what Paul is saying here. I was caught up into the third heaven, past the rim of the consciousness of men. And I heard unspeakable words That's what I'm praying for, that men and women of God would get back on their faces before God. And I'm not trying to call anyone into question. I'm not trying to indict any man and or woman of God. But I am praying that the men and women of God, the mouthpieces of God, began to seek God's face once again. Not for enticing words of man's wisdom, not to impress the flesh, not to impress the consciousness of men, but to speak and decree and declare in such a way that God himself is pleased with what's taking place. God, speak to your men and women servants. God, don't let us just be concerned with enticing words of man's wisdom. That we're more concerned that people are pleased, that people are satisfied, that human beings are satisfied, and not concerned with if you're satisfied. Help us, dear God. Help us, dear God. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Help us, dear God. Help us, dear God. So I was caught up. And words were said that I cannot utter. Things were said. God revealed himself in such a way that I had difficulty I had a challenge trying to express to others what God had did. I can understand his plight because when you truly have an experience with God, what you cannot do is expect everybody to understand where you are. That would be a huge mistake on your part. I'm not talking weird. When I'm talking this way, I'm never talking weird. If you know anything about me, I don't do weird, but I do do God. I do do God. He said, behold, Amos 8 and 11, I shall send a famine in this land, not for bread nor a thirst for water, but for the hearing of my word. I believe from the depths of my sanctified soul that coming forth in this next season, people are not just going to be okay with flesh. They're not going to be just okay with you just coming with your intellectual prowess. People have developed because of this thing, 
people have developed and redeveloped a hunger to hear from God. A hunger to hear from God. Is there a word from the Lord? I have no problem with you being intellectual in your presentation, but is there a word from the Lord? Is there a God-seasoned word from God? And those of us who come forth out of this business as usual, you might have a problem, my brother. You might have a problem, my sister. And I know you might not have tuned in this morning to hear this. But I pray before you write it off, you hear the conclusion of this matter. And it won't be today. Let, let me go a little further. Uh, not much. Listen to this now. Which is not lawful for man to utter. Of such a one will I glory. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. And he said, in essence, as I say, I could glory because I was watching what God was doing after that episode in my life. And many of you can attest to this. I mean, people came from everywhere. At the time, we were having one service on Sunday. We went from one service to two services, then to three services, then to four services, all of them packed to the rim and was headed to a fifth on Sunday. Five services on Sunday. People were packing in. Not to hear Bishop David E. Martin at the time, Pastor Martin. They were, they were there, packed in, so they could experience this. What is this? What is going on? People came from the north, south, east, and west. They even labeled us an occult, a cult rather. People in the city. Preachers in the city said we were an occult. And the reason for it is that they couldn't understand what was taking place in that building. They would come and men and women would be laid out on the floor, worshiping God and praising God. People were being healed. I mean, people, one Sunday morning, the Spirit of God, this is just one out of many, out of, out of hundreds. One in particular that I remember my assistant pastor at the time, his, his, his sister, loved her dearly, Sister Patty, was paralyzed. And she was in the service. And I hadn't even started preaching yet. But I got up to preach and the presence of God, the presence of God was so permeated in that room. She was sitting in her wheelchair, bowed over, head down, paralyzed. They had to put her in the, the wheelchair and push her in. And the spirit of God fell. And out of nowhere, Sister Patty began to scream. She just screamed. And we didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if someone was hurt or something happened. She just th threw back her head and started to scream. Paralyzed now. And out of nowhere, she got up, jumped up out of her wheelchair and started running around the, the room. She was paralyzed, jumped up out of her wheelchair and started circling the room. Not because of something I said, not because of something I did, not because of something I preached. It was just the glory of God in that room in such a way that it was paralyzing. It was, it was demonstrative. It was mind blowing. And when she jumped up out of that wheelchair, everyone that was there knew knew that she couldn't walk and she started to run around that room. It was pandemonium. 
It was pandemonium. I want the glory of God to come back to our churches that even when the priests stand up to preach, he can't because the glory is in the room. The Shekinah glory, his presence is in the room. I hope I'm not the only one. I hope I'm not the only one that's ready to go back to business as usual. Oh God, this is what I'm believing God. This is what I'm believing God for. I never shall forget. This was my first time experiencing it. The first time I experienced that, I went to uh, Full Gospel Holy Temple back on Fordham. My mother took me there. I was, I was in the sixth grade. My mother took me there. And I had never seen. That was my first time experiencing Apostle Murray. You believe it? Say amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But I had never experienced anything like that before. And that went away. And I never experienced it again until Haymarket. The glory of God. I'm praying that when we come forth out of this, it is not church as usual. Sometimes we come to the house of God that the glory of God is so permeated in the room that we can't preach. We can't sing. We just got to bask and, and labor in his presence. We just got to enjoy the aroma of his presence so we can see signs as the book of Acts says, signs, wonders, and miracles. <laughs> signs, wonders, and miracles. We want to turn this next generation like they did in the book of Acts upside down. Oh, God, I better leave this alone. We better turn. We want to turn it upside down. I, I want to see miracles again. I want to see healings again. I'm not just talking about man's that pansy. I'm talking about healings. We serve a God that can heal from cancer. We serve a God that can raise the dead. We serve a God. We serve a God. The saints of old didn't have as much money as people got today, but they had a whole lot of faith. And they trusted and they believed God. And y'all know I don't like going back in the archives because I want to see God move now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I got to close my Bible. Ah, I got to close it. I got to close it because I'm about to go somewhere in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Go with to God. I'm about to lay out in this floor and praise the name of my God. Listen to this, dear hearts. I cannot identify with this. I know what the apostle was talking about. I know what he was referring to. Been there. Been there. Been there. Out of my belly flowed rivers of living water. Been there. Brother preachers. Men and women of God. Seek God. Call upon him while he's near. Call upon him and he will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Don't settle for average. Don't settle for norm. Don't try to impress men. Don't seek an amen from people. Seek an amen from God. You want to know that when you put that mic down and when you walk away from that podium, that God is pleased with what you said. He's pleased with what you did. That the people don't just experience you and your gift. They experience God. Hallelujah to God. I'm sorry, (sighs) y'all. Of such a one will I glory. Yet of myself, I will not. Yet in myself, I would not. I'm like Paul. I can't glory in this. And I'm not trying to glory in it. I would be a fool to do so. I I, I would be a fool to do so. But what I do glory in, and I'll close right here. What I do glory in is what God did in my life to get me there. God sent me through the test of my life that changed me forever. The test of my life that for three and a half years, and I'm not going to go into detail, I cried myself to sleep because I felt that God had forsook me. 
I felt that God had put me out in the open valley and left me there to deal with it by myself. People mocked me. People laughed at me. Many times I would go home and cry, and that's the only way I could find some relief. I didn't care if I lived or if I died because as far as I was concerned, I was already dead. And didn't know, had no idea that God was, he was breathing and anointing to come. If you're here, if you're watching this morning, I want you to continue to follow me as I work my way through this passage of scripture. And I promise you, you will not, you are not going to regret it. If you are truly coming forth in this hour, preacher, pastor, bishop, apostle, saints alike, and you are ready to see the hand of the living God move in your life in such a way or in a greater way. You stay tuned because I'm going to challenge your spirit. I'm going to challenge your heart toward God. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to try my level best to push you into a relationship with God that God can use your life in this final hour. Stay tuned, and you won't regret it. Five yourself three times and say it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. If you're around somebody, high five them if you can. And say it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Here we go. If you want it, you can have it.